Welcome to Global Affairs, International Relations, and Geopolitical Briefings. This hour in focus. Japan blasts G7 summit for its imperialist and no nuclear threat. Let's delve into this recent development. In Japan, protesters gathered in Hiroshima on May 19, 2023, to oppose the G7 summit. After the nuclear bomb destroyed Hiroshima, Tashiyuki Mameki remembered crying as he stared up at a blackened sunset. It's a Japanese fear, they're in another universe. Japan has aged and its post war miracle economy has fizzled, dwarfed by China's market and might. A concerned Japanese public needs more security from new risks. The governing Liberal Democrat Party, LDP's, hands are unexpectedly untied by voters opposed to militarization. The administration of Prime Minister Fumio Kishida is spending billions on military expansion. Japan's pacifist values become more fractured with each militarization. The world is in turmoil, Mr. Mameki says. Recently, Prime Minister Kishida began discussing military budget increases. I wondered, are you going to start a war? Japan became a pacifist nation after Hiroshima and Nagasaki were bombed. Its 1947 post war constitution, imposed by U.S. occupiers, solidified this change. Article 9's first paragraph renounces war, while the second vows never to keep military troops. Article 9, the origin of Japan's pacifism, lies at the heart of the country's struggle to balance defense and peace. Some say the law has harmed Japan, but others say changing it is to abandon pacifism and disregard history. Japan faces unparalleled problems that have fostered a fear of encirclement. An assertive China spends billions on military. It has become more aggressive in the South China Sea, notably towards Taiwan, which borders Japan's southernmost islands. This has raised Japanese concerns that if conflict breaks out in Taiwan, Japan would be drawn into a war between the U.S. and China and targeted as an ally. It has the largest U.S. military presence outside the U.S. North Korea always threatens our existence. Over the past year, it has launched a record number of missiles, including six over Japan. Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the threat that it might use nuclear weapons, which this weekend's G7 conference is discussing, Have also raised nuclear war fears. The risks of a closer Moscow Beijing cooperation are also present. Japan understands that we are now living in a very rough neighborhood, says University of Tokyo International Security and political science professor Kazuto Suzuki. A minority of conservatives wanting national pride have long advocated for more militarization. The public is warming to the idea. According to recent polls. According to official surveys, more people desire a bigger and stronger SDF, from 29% in 2018 to 41.5% last year. 90% of Japanese support the US Japan Security Partnership, and 51% support changing Article 9, which prevents Japan from maintaining a military. It's accepted in Hiroshima. Every time I hear about North Korea's missiles, I'm horrified, adds Ems Tanaka. In today's world, people are attacked unexpectedly. I wonder if we need to see the spending as protection. G7 leaders passed the Hiroshima Peace Memorial's atomic bomb dome on May 19, 2023. After the nuclear assault, only the Hiroshima Jinbaku Dome remained. This delights the LDP. The party's founding concept is constitutional change, but Abe has long backed militarization. The administration has also been pressured by Washington, particularly former President Donald Trump, to strengthen its security alliance with the U.S. The SDS capabilities have long been a priority for the government. The public has been a break, Professor Brown argues. That break's gone. Japan has bought fighter fighters. Repaired aircraft ships and acquired hundreds of Tomahawk missiles under Mr. Kishida. In the next years, he will spend 43 yen, $311 bin, PS 250 bin, 
on defense. By 2027, Japan's military spending will be 2% of GDP and the third largest in the world. The LDP is also attempting to amend the constitution to clarify the SDS existence and Japan's right to a military. Ironically, the LDP has traditionally regarded Mr. Kishida Dovish. He advocates for a nuclear-free world because his relatives died in Hiroshima. He wrote a book on it. As a way of emphasize anti-proliferation, he chose Hiroshima to host the G7 summit. To sustain peace in Asia, Mr. Kishida believes Japan must greatly improve its defense. Some analysts think his notoriety makes his government's militarization more politically acceptable. Davish figures can make hawkish moves because people don't suspect their motives, Professor Brown remarked. But even Japanese hawks don't suggest establishing a nuclear arsenal. The only nation targeted by a nuclear weapon forbids that. Yet Abe and later Mr. Kishida have crossed red lines to strengthen Japan's defense. Former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe C. and former Foreign Minister Fumio Kishida are, in 2013. Japan's neighbors, such as China, worry about what additional taboos it may violate. Japan's sending lethal weaponry to invaded nations like Ukraine is under consideration. Volodymyr Zelensky received backing from Mr. Kishida. Tokyo supplies Kiev with non-lethal defense equipment. According to Professor Suzuki, this would be a test case for Taiwan. Japan's support for the U.S. in a battle with China over the island is already in doubt. Abe's proposal to host U.S. nuclear weapons last year stunned Japan. Last year, Mr. Kishida rejected nuclear sharing saying it contradicted Japan's opposition to nuclear weapons. Experts suggest Japan may reconsider its mind. South Korea acquiring nuclear weapons, China and Russia becoming more dangerous, or Russia using nuclear weapons in Ukraine are examples. Japan's post-war identity and pacifism are challenged every time it crosses a new red line or considers doing so. Japan's beliefs may survive growing militarization, according to some. Daisuke Ekimoto, a pacifism researcher, argues its anti-nuclear and anti-war beliefs have endured despite its seemingly inconsistent pacifism. Japan's security policy strengthening in response to the changing strategic environment is what is happening currently, says Hosei University adjunct lecturer Dr. Ekimoto. Professor Suzuki concurs. He says, I trust Japanese intent. I believe Japan has pledged not to go to war for 80 years. We had a terrible experience and won't do it again. However, others disagree. They believe pacifism is stretched to its limit by repeated redefining. I think the way the government is doing it is dirty, says Hiroshima student Sarah Agura. They're interpreting to deliberately allow force, I mistrust them. They have no intention of going to war now, but I think they are kind of getting ready to go to war when the time comes, says anti-nuclear weapons campaigner Yuna Okajima. Yuna Okajima, an anti-nuclear weapons campaigner, worries the government would undermine Japan's pacifist character. Some feel the lack of a national reckoning with Japan's wrongdoings fuels militarism. In schools mandated peace education about the two world wars, Japan's role as the aggressor and its war crimes are rarely discussed. Misuzu Kanda, a graduate student, thinks Japan's negative history with other countries is sometimes covered up by the nuclear weapons issue. Hiroshima is my birthplace. Peace education focuses on Hiroshima and Nagasaki's suffering. But I think we need to reflect on what we did to other countries when we think about peace. Her buddy M's Okajima concurs. I think it proves the Japanese government doesn't want to face this history. To foster patriotism, they wouldn't teach it to young children. But if we don't look at our perpetrator history, we're more likely to repeat it. The Jinbaku Dome, the sole structure left intact after the atomic bomb, is the solitary remnant of Hiroshima's past. 
A nuclear attack cenotaph is across a shimmery river at Peace Memorial Park. Let all the souls here rest in peace, for we shall not repeat the evil is engraved in marble. The atomic bombs were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in the end, because we started a war, says Mr. Mameki as he looks at the cenotaph. Hiroshima and Nagasaki burned because of the Imperial Japanese Army. We mustn't fight again. We're going to sum things up here for the time being. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.